Cecilia. Thank you, Sarah. Michael Cohen under oath pleaded guilty to, among things, paying Stormy Daniels and Karen McDougal during the campaign. And he says he did it at the direction of the President of the United States. Did President Trump commit a crime? Uh, as the President said, we've stated many times he did nothing wrong. There are no charges against him. Um, and we've commented on this extensively. Then why not report these payments? Uh, again, uh, I'm not going to get into the back and forth details. I can tell you, as the president has stated on numerous occasions, he did nothing wrong. There are no charges against him in this. Uh, and just because Michael Cohen uh, made a plea deal doesn't mean that that implicates the president on anything. Can you stand John, here today and say the president has never lied to the American people because so many people now look back at that tape of him on Air Force One saying he knew nothing about these payments. When in fact we now know he knew everything about these payments. So has he lied? Look, again, I think that's an, a ridiculous accusation. The president in this matter has done nothing wrong and there are no charges against him. John? Uh, the president said to Fox News in an interview with Ainsley Earhart this morning that this could not have been an illegal campaign contribution because he <coughs> paid the money. He put more than $60 million of his own money into the campaign. So. How do you draw the line between, I mean, maybe this didn't flow through the campaign, but how do you draw the line between what was a campaign contribution and what might have been a payment to somebody for other purposes? Look, I'm not going to get into the back and forth of the legal part of this. Um, I would refer you to the president's outside counsel on that. As I told Cecilia, what I can tell you is what the president has stated a number of times. He did nothing wrong. There are no charges against him. Just because Michael Cohen has made a deal doesn't mean anything with regards to the president. Stephen. Sarah, the president tweeted this morning in frustration that Michael Cohen wrote Perhaps you can shed a little bit more light on that because the implication is that, the, that, that Michael Cohen gave up something that the president would rather stay secret. Is, is that what we should read into this, or is there another The president has expressed his views on that. I don't have anything further to add. Can I ask one other question? Is the president now planning on or intent on pardoning Paul Mann? Uh, the Manafort case doesn't have anything to do with the president, doesn't have anything to do with his campaign, and it doesn't have anything to do with the White House. I actually was going to ask about Manafort, but let me ask in a slightly different way. Even if it has nothing to do with the president, he still could have the power to uh, pardon Mr. Manafort. Is that something that he's begun discussing with the team? Has he ruled it out? Does it come up? And the I'm not um, aware of any conversations regarding that at all. Thanks. Uh, the question that I also Other than ask, actually when he was asked by um, a news outlet earlier this week, and he said uh, that he hadn't been thinking about that at all. Thanks. Um, the, uh, in, in times like this, not that there are that many times like this, uh, White House is often trying to figure out uh, whether there need to be any internal adjustments to deal with some of the political issues you're going to have now with the Hill, with voters, with uh, internally with lawmakers. Are, is the White House making any adjustments in terms of responsibilities of chiefs of staff, of communications to donors, communications to supporters, uh, how, you will, how you intend to kind of respond both protectively and offensively to the, the crisis that you're now in? Um. Uh, I wouldn't view it that way um, at all and um, would disagree with the premise of your question. Uh, the White House is focused on the same things uh, that we were focused on the first day that we got here, and that is growing the economy, which is doing extremely well, protecting our borders, strengthening the safety and security of all Americans. Uh, those are the things that we're focused on that day one, January 20th, and those are the same things that we're focused on right now. Jake. Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, first, I'd like to start off by congratulating you. This is your 100th briefing, and there's no way this, what you do every day is easy. Uh, <laughs> I've got two real quick questions. First of all, our colleague Jonathan Swan over at Axios recently wrote, and I quote, Several top Republican operatives working on the midterm elections told me Trump's fanciful red wave predictions could depress Republican turnout and ironically serve to make any blue wave even bigger. So are you familiar with any Republican operatives who would concur with this statement? Uh, not that I'm aware of. I think that the thing that's going to encourage people is the lack of a message by Democrats. Uh, they have nothing to run on other than attacking this president. And not only does the president and the record that Republicans have had over the last year and a half under his leadership is a great one to run on. We have an incredible story to tell. The economy is booming. Uh, record numbers just today. We're going to continue focusing on the things that Americans care about. And I think that'll be uh, certainly what encourages them and certainly what will help push uh, Republicans to do well in November. And yeah. yesterday, yeah. yesterday the president stated that, quote, Israel will pay a price for the Jerusalem embassy move. 
not sure if that's an exact quote though. Should Israel be concerned that the price they may have to pay would be one that they're not prepared or willing to pay at this point? Uh, we think that the president's decision was the right one uh, to move the embassy, uh, something that other presidents had promised and failed to do. And this is a president who's been delivering on the promises that he's made. Sorry. What price are we talking about? What price might Israel have to pay? Uh, I don't have anything further for you, John. Thanks a lot, Sarah. Since uh, those guilty verdicts yesterday in the Paul Manafort trial, the president has said some kind things about this. Mr. Manafort. He's called him a good man, a good person, he said he feels badly for what has happened to him. He tweeted today, unlike Michael Cohen, he refused to break, make up stories in order to get a deal. He tweeted, such respect for a brave man. Is Mr. Manafort a simple candidate for a presidential pardon? Uh, once again, that's not something that has been up for discussion. I don't have anything for you. Let me ask you about the Kavanaugh nomination. There's some Democrats uh, that are saying that the nomination should be put on hold because of the legal developments yesterday. Uh, Hawaiian <coughs> Senator Maisie Hirono uh, put out a statement. She said this president who is an unindicted co-conspirator in a criminal matter does not deserve the courtesy of a meeting with his nominee. What is uh, your reaction to that, Sarah? Uh, this is a desperate and pathetic attempt by Democrats to obstruct a very highly qualified nominee. Uh, the hearing date has been set for September 4th, and Judge Kavanaugh will be there. Steve? Yes, Sarah. Uh, trade talks between the United States and China are resuming. The president earlier this week expressed quite low expectations for those talks. I'm wondering if that has changed in what you would like to see come out of uh, these discussions? We're, we're, as you said, these conversations are continuing. Uh, I don't have any announcements on them. They're ongoing. Certainly what we'd like to see is better trade deals for the United States. Uh, the president wants to see free, fair, and more reciprocal trade between other countries, particularly with China, and we're going to continue in those conversations. Sarah, yeah. Yeah. Sarah, does the president feel betrayed by Michael Cohen, and is he concerned about what he might say to Robert Mueller? Uh, I don't think the president's concerned at all. He knows uh, that he did nothing wrong and that there was no collusion, and we're going to continue uh, focusing on the things that uh, Americans care about and that we can have an impact on. One more question on trade. Uh, do you anticipate a deal between Mexico and the United States on NAFTA this week? Uh, I'm not going to get ahead of any potential announcement. Uh, for decades, NAFTA has harmed American workers and cost the U.S. billions of dollars. We're focused on making sure we deal with the new address those problems, and we'll let you know when we have an announcement. Thanks, Sarah. In his interview today, the president said he found out about those payments that Michael Cohen made later on. But he's on tape discussing how to make one of the payments with Michael Cohen, so before the payment was made. So how do you explain that? Once again, I've commented on this pretty extensively. Um, what I can tell you about this is that the president did nothing wrong. There are no charges against him. There is no collusion for anything beyond that. I would refer you to the president's outside counsel. Yeah. Rudy Giuliani is not a taxpayer-funded spokesperson for the president. You are. So how can I'm you not explain something the president said today on the grounds of the White House that seems to contradict an audio that has been confirmed that it is of the president saying that. Once again, um, I have addressed this a number of times just because you continue to ask the same questions over and over. I'm not going to give you a different answer. The president has done nothing wrong. There are no charges against him. There is no collusion. That's what I can tell you about this. If you want something further, I would refer you to the president's outside counsel. Does the White Julie, House maintain oh, sorry, that the President, yeah. Does the White House you, maintain Julie? the president did not have affairs with Karen McDougal or Stephanie Clifford? We've addressed this a number of times. Francesca, go ahead. Thanks, Sarah. Two questions. First, you said that there have been no discussions about a uh, potential pardon for Paul Manafort. So you're not ruling it out entirely. I mean, if there's no discussions about it right at this point, the president hasn't said he won't do it. It's possible that there could be a pardon for him in the future. Is that the, correct? The, the only comment that the president has made uh, on this was when he was asked by a news outlet earlier this week, and he said, no, he was not considering that. Well, Beyond that, that the there have been that no other discussions. Before. That was before Paul Manafort uh, was convicted on eight of the 18 counts at the time when the president was asked that. So I'm asking now, if, now that he's been convicted on those counts. And I'm answering you now that there have been no discussions at the White House on that matter. Right, okay, on a, on, a, on a different point. Last time that we were in here, you read off some ex-officials and one current official who the president was considering taking away their security clearance. I wanted to follow up on that and ask you, who was, first of all, who was conducting that review to determine whether or not those security clearances will be pulled? And second of all, I wanted to ask you about a tweet that the president said 
saying that he thought that potentially James Clapper is being nice to him so that he doesn't lose his security clearance. Is that a threat that if James Clapper isn't nice to him, that he'll lose his security clearance? No, I don't have any other announcements on that front. We're continuing to review. When we have an announcement, I'll let you know. Yeah. Sorry, Julie, who's go doing ahead. The review? I'm sorry. Who's doing the review? That was uh, a question. number of people involved here at the White House. <laughs> Julie, go ahead. Sarah, in his tweet about Paul Manafort this morning, the president seemed to be <coughs> praising him for essentially refusing to cooperate with federal prosecutors in a way that could implicate him, the president. Um, is that what he meant to suggest? And what does not seem to indicate that he thinks that loyalty to him personally is more important with abiding by the law or cooperating with this government in a, an investigation? Not at all. The Manafort case doesn't involve the president, doesn't involve his campaign, and has nothing to do with the White House. The president has expressed his views. Sarah. 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 Thanks, Sarah. The, Michael Cohen's lawyer has suggested publicly that there is new evidence that they would like to present about foreknowledge of election hacking. So does the president, does the White House maintain there was no foreknowledge of any election hacking during the 2016 campaign. Uh, I'm not aware of anything, no. Sarah, 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 Sarah. two questions as well for you. Um, given that five convicted felons are now linked to the president or his campaign, and given that the president promised to hire the best people, did he fail to live up to that yeah. promise? Look, the president has uh, employed thousands of people in his lifetime uh, and had incredible successes both in business and in uh, the public service. Uh, he's the president of the United States. I think he's doing quite well. Thank and you. can I just follow up uh, my second question, Sarah, just follow up with Cecilia, because I I understand that you don't want to answer the same question a million times, and you said the president did nothing illegal, but I didn't hear a response to the question. Did he lie to the American people when he talked about this on Air Force One? No, and the president's addressed this a number of times. Sarah, thank you. I have a couple of questions. Um, president Trump says he feels badly for Cohen and Manafort. One of the men pleaded guilty to crimes. The other was found guilty of crimes, including tax fraud, which robbed the American public of tax dollars they were owed. Why does he feel bad for either of these men? Uh, once again, the president has expressed his views on this matter, and I have nothing else to add on that. Just to follow up on that, does he thank, believe thank that there's an intrinsic problem with the Justice Department, or does he only believe if someone who is close to him uh, is a victim? of the Justice Department. Yeah, I think we've certainly seen uh, a lot of concerns come out of some of the activities uh, of people that worked at the Department of Justice, whether it's uh, Peter Strzok or Lisa Page or James Comey. Uh, we've walked through those a number of times, and certainly I think it's given cause for a lot of Americans, some of the activities those individuals no, engaged in. Thank you, Sarah. question is, if someone who's close to him, the president paints them as a victim, as if his own Justice Department is not doing its job. Uh, again, certainly the president has expressed his views on this matter, um, and he's raised concerns about a number of other problems that he's seen within the Department of Justice. Hunter. You, I, I wanted to follow up about the earlier question about the president's comments on Fox News with regard to the payments to Ms. Daniels and Ms. McDougal. Um, when exactly did he learn about them? And also, are there any other payments he has now become aware of? Or are those the only two women who've received money for agreeing not to repeat their stories of alleged affairs with the president? Once again, I've, ad I've addressed all that I'm going to say on the, the Cohen issue. For those specific questions with more details, I would refer you to the president's outside counsel. If we're going to such counsel. crucial matters to the outside counsel, can't we bring them in here for the briefing? Uh, they don't or work, even here. They don't work here at the White House, the but I would certainly encourage you to reach out to them. John? Sure. Thank you, Sarah. Going back to the <laughs> security clearances, all signs are this is the first time a president personally has uh, been handling the removal of security clearances. Uh, it's usually been done by superiors, even in the last two big espionage cases of the Cold War, the Irvin Scarbett case of 1961 and Felix Block of 1990. The Secretary of State pulled the security clearances of people accused of espionage. Uh, you said the president that others are reviewing it. Who are these others reviewing it, and does the president take a personal role in the potential removal of security clearance? Uh, certainly the president has the constitutional authority to do so. Uh, I know this will come as a shock to you, but I'm not aware of the details of those specific cases that you outlined. Um, but the president has the authority to make that decision. Um, he's also consulting with members of his national security team and uh, members of his legal team here at the White House to make those decisions. Uh, one of the, is he also considering uh, a policy of just <laughs> simply having all security passes 
turned in when someone leaves government service? Uh, I'm not aware of that. As a policy, certainly we would uh, like the ability, if needed, uh, to be able to consult with individuals on national security matters. Um, but they do uh, feel, the team here, that we should look at uh, the security clearance process as a whole. Uh, my understanding is that there are roughly 5 million people that have uh, security clearances here in the United States, and we'd like to take a look at the overall process of who has and who maintains those security clearances. Deborah. Yeah, um, you're right about the president having constitutional authority, as far as I understand, about security clearances as well as pardons. So I guess the question I have is, even though he has that authority, is anybody in the White House thought about putting together boards that would look at security clearances for former um, personnel and pardons as well? Because and the president doesn't seem to be consulting the pardon attorney in the AG's office much. It, is he consulting people? Is he thought of of uh, doing something that would be more transparent, perhaps? Uh, certainly, as the review of the security clearances, my, there is a uh, working group that is looking at the overall uh, security clearance process um, and who maintains those and whether or not those are needed across the board within government. Um, in terms of the pardon process, again, the president has the um, authority to carry out those decisions. He takes input and looks at them on a case-by-case -case basis. Sarah, Kristen, on that Sarah, Sarah, thank, uh, thank you, Sarah. Board. Kristen, um, go ahead. Go, go ahead. That, that security, you said that there are people who are looking at security plans. Can you tell us? Uh, who they there are? are a number of members on the national securities. He might have to get back to you. I know that uh, the chief of staff is involved in that process. Sarah, thank you. Earlier this week, uh, the president told our colleagues at Reuters that. Can you speak could, up? I'm sorry. Sorry, the president said earlier this week to Reuters that he could run it in reference to the Mueller investigation. What did he mean by that? Uh, the president has. Um, said many times that he's chosen to remain uninvolved uh, in this process, and that's where we are right now. Is that an indication further. that he's thinking about taking some type of action against Special Counsel Robert Mueller, like revoking his security clearances? Uh, I'm not aware of any conversation around that. Sir, Sir, is, is, it, is it an indication that the President sees himself as above the law? Not at all. Hi, thank you, Sarah, very much. Some legal experts and lawmakers are saying the President is corrupt and that uh, that are ground for an impeachment case. Is the White House concerned about that uh, that could have an effect in the, in the elections, in the midterm elections? As all, and also, does the White House take these allegations seriously? Uh, certainly we take allegations seriously. Uh, the idea of an impeachment is, uh, frankly, a sad attempt by Democrats. It's the only message they seem to have going into the midterms. And I think it's another great reminder of why Americans uh, should support other like-minded candidates like the president that are actually focused on continuing to grow the economy, continuing to secure our borders, continuing to focus on the safety and security of all Americans. Uh, I think that the biggest contrast you could possibly make is the message of the Democrats, which is nothing more than attacking the president and looking at uh, cheap political stunts while this White House and and uh, Republicans in the House and Senate are focused on actually doing good things for the American people. Sarah. 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 Amen. Thank you, Sarah. Earlier this week, the President had some tough words of criticism for Jay Powell, the Federal Reserve Chairman. Uh, can you tell us when the last time the President and Powell uh, met face to face and whether or not the President brought up that criticism? with Powell directly? Uh, I believe the last time they met, I'd have to double check, uh, was uh, right around the time that uh, that uh, Jerome Powell took his place on the Federal Reserve Board. So has he spoken to him directly about his concerns about raising interest rates? Uh, I'm not aware that they've spoken about that at all. And One last question. Sorry, go ahead, Emma. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. On Venezuela, is the president involved, planning on getting involved there at all? There's millions fleeing the country now. What is the U.S. stance on Venezuela at this point? Uh, the United States continues to support uh, Venezuela's neighbors and provide emergency aid and shelter to Venezuela and also continues to stand with the people of Venezuela. Um, and we're going to keep all options on the table and we'll keep you posted if we have any further announcements. Sarah. Thank you so much. And we're going to wrap up here so that we can all join the president in the middle of honor ceremony. Thanks, Scott. Good.